Hey everybody, my name is Bill, this is Yo-Yo Tech. Today, we're gonna get back into OpenHab. We're gonna take a look at the ever so dreaded configuration files. We're also gonna take a look at some rules and we're gonna look at backup and upgrade. So, so guys, just, so, hold on. This is the guy making all of that noise. Yes, this is Milo. And guys, I introduced him in some of my other videos, but you know what? He's getting bigger, and along with that, he needs constant attention, he needs walking, he loves to play. But that makes it really hard for me to get things done when I'm at home. As you heard, he hears me, he starts barking, he wants to go out. So, whether I'm at home or whether I'm away, that's why today I'm excited to introduce to you a new website called rover.com. This is a website that will connect you with other pet loving professionals who can help you with your pet needs, whether it's taking them for a walk, playing with them for a bit, or just rubbing their belly. They're there to help you out when you can't take care of your dog. So don't let being a busy professional get in the way Check out rover.com. Whether you need in-home dog boarding, pet sitting, dog walking, dog daycare, Rover, it connects pet parents with dog people who are gonna treat their pets just like their family. Check out Rover. Trust me, there's a Rover sitter for every dog out there. Thank you so much to Rover because without them, I wouldn't be able to make these videos all the time. They had seen Milo in my video, they reached out and sponsored it and they realized I needed to find a Rover walker for me. But trust me, there is a rover sitter for every single dog out there. Check down below, I provided you with a link that's going to get you $20 off your first try. Just sign up and trust me, it frees up time. It makes you feel so good to know someone is taking care of your pet while you're getting done the things that you need to do. With that said, let's get back to open hat. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is open up a command terminal. We're gonna go into the OpenHab folder that we're currently using, and we're gonna go into the runtime folder, the bin folder, and we're gonna look for the backup script. Now you need to run this as root, so sudo backup, and that's pretty much it. It runs through pretty quickly, and it creates a backup of your current configuration. So looking in Finder again, we can see the file is now here. Uh, it creates a backup folder for it. What I like to do at this point is close this and I move the current open hab that I'm running into a backup folder and I go ahead and I download from the daily build site the newest one. I've got the link for that down below. So go ahead save that file and it's going to take a minute to download. Once that's done we're essentially going to unzip that file we are going to restore it to the desktop where I normally keep my running configuration. And then what we're going to do is we're going to copy the backup folder with the backup file we created into that new configuration. And what that does is it just kind of keeps everything together. I mean, we could restore it from the other folder, but I like to keep kind of uh, running snapshots of everything. And I like to keep copies of things just in case things don't go as planned. So we're gonna open the two of them up side by side and there is that backup folder. And like I said, I'm just gonna copy that over to the new snapshot 2.4 from the 2.3. You can see there's no backup directory yet. Let's go ahead and copy that and there we go. So now we have a copy of the backup in both running versions. So we're gonna CD, we're gonna make sure we go back to the root and go into the folder again. So we go into the new 2.4 folder. Desktop, there's 2.4, which is the one we just opened go into that runtime folder again, back into bin, and this time we're gonna look for restore. Pretty much the opposite as before, we're gonna do sudo restore, and then we will go back to directories, dot dot slash dot dot slash backups, and the name of that file, and that's the one we just copied over. Of course, gonna ask for your password, because we did a sudo, and that's it. It's gonna ask to restore, it's gonna tell you it'll overwrite anything with the same name, and boom, it is done. And after that, pretty much all you have to do is go back in like normal to your OpenHab, run the start.sh command, and you will see OpenHab 2.4. So that is pretty much it. Backup and restored, super easy. 
So now we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at some config files in OpenHub. One of the things that uh, has come a long way is code editors. And the one that I'm currently using is the Visual Studio code editor. Now this is a free download from Microsoft and there is a plugin for OpenHub. So it makes things super simple to work with. So go ahead and go on over to code.visualstudio.com and it should detect the version of the operating system you're using and go ahead and download that. Now there have been a many different uh, editors that I've used in the past, but this one's really nice because there is a uh, plugin that we're going to install. Uh, so it's a simple download. There's no other dependencies, and and to be honest, it installs really clean. Uh, one of the other ones that I use sometimes is Brackets, but it doesn't have that plugin, and this one's come a long way. So once that's downloaded, go ahead and click on it. Now I'm doing this on a Mac, on a PC. It should be the same. You're going to go ahead and extract it. We're going to just drag it. It's one simple file. We're going to drag that to our applications folder here on the Mac. And that will copy it over. And then we'll go into the applications folder. And we will double click on Visual Studio Code. So, I mean, it's literally that simple. Now, this was downloaded from the web, so it's going to give us the little pop up asking us uh, if we're okay running it since it's the first time running it, the security thing from a Mac. Just go ahead and say open. Now, when that opens, we are in the default workspace. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and open a folder and we're going to go into the OpenHAB snapshot that we just installed on the desktop and we will choose the comp for the configuration files. Now you can see them all here. We've got the HTML icons, items, persistence, and so forth. Go ahead and click open. And what that does is it opens all of those files within the editor. So they're, they're just one click away from being able to edit them, which is really nice. Now you can see them all down the side here. And uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and create a items file. Now an item file is one of the first things that you're going to use in OpenHAB. This is essentially where you tell OpenHAB all of the different um, types of devices that you'll be using. So this is where you take your things and you match them up to items. Items are, uh, are things that you will work on. Now this is confusing, but as we work through it, you'll understand. So we're going to go ahead and create a new file and I'm going to go ahead and save that and go ahead and give it a name and you want to make sure it's saving the comp folder and it should be in your items folder. Now it's really important how you name it. The name itself doesn't matter, so I'm just going to call this my house and then dot items. Items is what tells OpenHAB what that file is for. So it's very important to have the extension correct. So guys, at this point, you're going to see at the top a little thing pops up and tells us that the, there is a marketplace extension available. So go ahead and click search and it automatically finds OpenHAB. And we're going to go ahead and just click on the install. And that's how simple it is. Essentially, the Microsoft Studio uh, editor here will download that plugin and it'll install everything it needs to work with OpenHAB for you off this local instance. And this is really nice because what it does is it loads the live configuration from your OpenHAB server. So any devices you found, all of the settings, anything that there is to work with them is now in this editor and it's live so you can work with it to build your config files. So I'm going to show you a quick example here. If we go back into the myhouse.items, you'll see all of the items that are on my OpenHAB and server start to show up. And just to demonstrate here, this is something you'd normally have to type out all of these things. Look how much information that just pulled uh, in past versions of OpenHAB and without this editor, that's something you'd have to type out all manually. Um, I'll show you a simpler version here. We just go down to Globelight and we click right click on it and we say create items from channels and look at that three things there that's everything you need to start working with it so uh, the reason I'm showing you this right now is just to show you how nice this editor is to work with things these are things that normally you'd have to do manually but the editor now allows you to do automatically so what I want you to do is go ahead download everything get everything installed to this point and when we start up the next video we're going to dive in we're going to start creating rules items files script files all of these different things and that will be the final piece of the puzzle you need to get all of your open hab up and running using config files and this has got to be the simplest way to do it using this live version of microsoft studio editor 
So that's it. You can see how simple it is to back up your system. The config files, they're not that scary, guys. Get in there, give them a try. Uh, creating some basic rules, things like that are actually pretty simple. If you keep things organized from the beginning, you're going to find that it is really simple to start to expand on them. Start with something small, some really basic. And as you go, you're going to add little bits and pieces. Check out examples on the community pages. There's some fantastic stuff. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. If you like the video, you know the drill. If you haven't already, subscribe. I gotta say this. And that's it. Thanks so much, and we'll see you in the next video.